For the first one, also it seems like because the first set has a zero and the second set doesn't, so the first set should be the one that has more elements, right? But no, the answer to this right here is they have the same number of elements. And for the second one, the answer to this right here is although this set contains zero, this set does not, but they also have the same number of elements. And we just have to deal with infinite sets really, really carefully. Now, the real challenge is, can we find a back direction from this set to that set? And likewise, we have to do the same so that we can show that these two sets and these two sets, they have the same number of elements. Okay, let's talk about the first one right here. Again, we need a back direction to go from one set to the other. And let me just call the back direction to be F. And let me just go from the first set to the second. So I will just put N to N plus. N plus is just a set of all the positive natural numbers. And I'm using zero as a natural number, just a convention, all right? Because I'm the creator of this video. So anyway, well, this right here, it's not that bad because this and that set, they are countable. So it's pretty straightforward. Can we go from zero to one, one to two, two to three, and so on? Yeah, very, very straightforward. We can just add one to it. That's all. So the formula is, we can just say that f of n equal to n plus 1, and that's it. This is clearly a bijection, so done deal. However, for the second one, it's trickier because these two sets, they are sets of real numbers, and unfortunately, they are not countable. And it does seem like we have an extra zero here, and this one does not. Hmm. Well, I think a picture will help. So let's go ahead and draw a picture because set A, this right here is just an interval going from 0 to 1, including 0, not including 1. And for set B, we do not include 0 and we do not include 1. So this is the picture for set B. Okay, now we have to think about how we can map all these numbers right here to these numbers here. Perhaps let's focus on the 0 first because it seems like the 0 is that extra number, huh? Well, we have to think about number right here, so that 0 can be mapped to. From 0 to 1, what's in the middle? Of course, 1 half. Let's just map this into 1 half. How's that? Why not? Good. So, we did it. However, it still seems like we have more numbers from the first set than the second set, because I still have the 1 half here, and then we use the 1 half right here already, huh? Hmm, how can we... Deal with that though. Let's focus on the one half on set A. Now, here is the deal. Although they are not countable, but we can think about how we can make a subset, a countable subset from set A to help us out. If you look at one half, what's the next fraction? Well, I just should put a quotation mark next to it. What's the next fraction? To one third. What's the next fraction? One fourth, and so on, so on, so on. You see, the denominator is just pretty much like that, right? Well, that's why I put down these two questions in the same video, because here is the deal. Right here, we can just map one half to one third here. And let me just see, okay, one third is about right here. Let's go ahead and do that. Can we? Sure. And can we do the same procedure? Well, of course, right here, we also have one third. And I'm just going to map one third to... 1 over 4 right here. So that's excellent. So here is 1 over 4. Let's go ahead and do that. And what's the next procedure? Of course, we map 1 over 4 from set A to 1 over 5, and so on, so on, so on. Yeah, and as you can see, this procedure will work. It's an, though this is approaching 0, but don't worry, we do not have the 0 in set B anyway. So this is great. Now let's go ahead and write down some formulas. Here's the deal. Again, we need a back direction, so let me just put that down. And we are going from A to B, so let me just put this down right here. Um, zero is in set A only, so perhaps we should write this into like you know pieces. So let's go ahead and put down f of x because we're dealing with real numbers, so let me use x. First piece, I'm going to get to one half. If x is equal to zero, right? So that's good. Now, here is the deal. If x is in the form of 1 over n, like 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on, so on, so on. So I will also have to indicate for 
n equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on, so on, so on. And as you can see, this is the countable part. Very similar to the first one, of course. Well, in this case, if x is equal to 1 over n as your input, then the output will have to be 1 over n plus 1. You just add 1 to the denominator to get to the next fraction. Also, you have a lot more other fractions, a lot more rational numbers right here, but this will be the one that we have to focus on, because this way we can finish all those things. Then, here is the purple pen. Blue pen has retired, so unfortunately. Of course, we have a lot more uh, numbers here, but it's okay because we can just go ahead and map it to itself. So it's pretty much just go like this. Okay, here we go. f of x will just be equal to x if I'll just put down otherwise. If it's not this, if it's not that, so that means if otherwise. If x is not 0, if x is not 1 over n, then just go ahead and map it to itself. So that way you can see, we actually fill all these numbers to here. So you can merge them to only this much piece. Hey, if you guys want to learn more math and have fun at the same time, then come here and check out Brian.org. This right here is a Math and Science website, and they offer a lot of interesting courses for you guys. They have over 50 interactive courses, and they keep adding new courses. And one of the reasons why I like it is that they have the differential equation too. They have a lot of interesting things right here, especially they have the animations. You guys can look at these pictures and really see what's going on, and you guys can continue. Read the theorems and answer their questions here. If you get it wrong, of course you guys can check out the explanation, and you guys can really learn really well this way. And the topics will get harder and harder and more and more interesting and a lot of them are real life examples you guys can learn from. And one of the best parts is that they also have practice on Fourier and Laplace equations. You guys can come here and start working on their exercise. And if you guys would like, you guys can also use the link in the description brilliant.work slash blackpenredpen because this way you guys can get a 20% off discount to their annual premium subscription so that way you guys can get the access to all of their courses. This is so cool, isn't it? Look at that! Man! Wow! Um, and of course, this is clearly bijection, and you're done. So perhaps I'll put a box here. And perhaps I'll put a box here. That's it! Leave a comment down below and let me know if you guys like this kind of questions. I love them so much. Anyway, as always, that's it.